Welcome back, everyone. I'm Sarah Peck, and this is the Startup Pregnant Podcast. Today, I get to talk all about meditation and yoga and being a founder, a co-founder of a company with Anna Gannon. Anna is a mom. She's a co-founder and the community guide at Expectful, which is a meditation app for expecting parents. And she's a writer and a yoga and meditation teacher. She's written all over the web, like at the Huffington Post, Mind Body Green, Yoga Today, and also for the Expectful blog. And her big passion is all about how important it is to get to know your mind and to give it space to rest and that mind, body, and baby connection. And she's on a mission to improve women's emotional health during their fertility, during pregnancy, and during new motherhood. So today we talk all about what the benefits of meditation are and why movement is so important and how to connect women both to themselves and to other people to let you know that you're not alone in this process, this wild and crazy process of growing human life. So in today's episode, I ask her, to tell us the story of how meditation became part of her life and what it looks like and what it can do for you during pregnancy, like why it can be so helpful and what she wishes more people knew about pregnancy and about fertility and about the mind-body connection. Uh, We also talk about depression and anxiety and how difficult it can be to become a new mom. She shares her story with us on this show. So I'm so grateful that everybody who joins this show is so honest and open about the journey because I think that just helps all of us as parents. So let's get into the episode. Welcome to the Startup Pregnant Podcast, where we talk to creative leaders about what it means to be an entrepreneur and a parent. I'm your host, Sarah K. Peck. This podcast is made possible by sponsors like you. Consider supporting this podcast with a monthly donation on our Patreon page. Head to patreon.com slash startup pregnant. We've got folks who we call our coffee friends who donate the equivalent of a cup of coffee each month to make this show possible. And we're backed by companies we believe in that can help make the lives of busy entrepreneurs and parents a little bit easier. If you want to become one of our company sponsors, head to startuppregnant.com slash podcast and get in touch. All right, everybody, I have Anna Gannon on the line. I'm so excited to have her here. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Sarah. Excited to be here. Oh, I have so many questions for you. I hope we'll be able to fit it all in because you are just such a perfect guest for this show. But before we get into all of your expertise about mindfulness and meditation and parenting and pregnancy and fertility, all of it, right? You're literally the perfect guest. I want to ask you, what time did you wake up this morning and what was your morning like? (laughs) Sorry, that's such a funny question. Um, (laughs) I woke up at four o'clock because I usually wake up at 4.30 to teach a private, but my daughter was sick in bed with me, which I was just sharing with you. So I was up at four emailing my private and telling him I was definitely not going to make it. So then I went back to bed and I woke up around 7.30, which was really nice because I can't remember the last time I got to sleep in that late. (laughs) That's luxurious if you usually wake up at 4.30. Yeah, it was really luxurious. It was really nice. (laughs) So what time do you go to bed then? I mean, I try to go to bed by 10, but I usually end up just like sitting and watching a show with my husband. It's the only time we watch a show on the iPad in the bedroom and usually fall asleep around 11. So yeah, I don't get much sleep, but that's why I meditate. (laughs) 100%. I've heard you probably know so much more about this, that meditation can change how much sleep you need and or lots of stuff in your brain. What do you do at 430? What does it mean to have a private? Oh, okay. So I'm a yoga teacher as well. So I have a guy who I teach in Manhattan. So I wake up at 4.30 to get to him by six o'clock on the dot and teach him yoga for an hour and then come back. And it's funny because, you know, I work for Expectful full time. That's my main gig, but I've been a yoga instructor for over six years. And it's something that I just can't let go of. It's an extension of my body to teach. I just love it so much. So I do it on the side as well. Okay, tell us about Expectful, what it is and what it does. 
Yeah. So Expectful is a meditation app for women who are preparing to conceive, pregnant or new moms. And it really takes you through the whole journey, right? From conception to becoming a parent and is kind of like this tool for your mind. And the reason that it was created is because the founder of Expectful, he found meditation in his late 20s. I think he's 34 now. And it totally transformed his life. And he really couldn't believe like how much this simple thing that he did every day really enhanced his emotional state, his mental state, and in turn his life. And he had grown up, his mother's parents were in the Holocaust. And she always had a very anxious life. And when she was pregnant with him, she had this when she was mothering him when he was a little boy, she just always had a lot of anxiety. And he's always thought about how much that affected his life. You know, it's not something that she chose to do. It's just how she was. And when meditation helped him so much, he got curious about what if his mom would have meditated, you know, when she was a new mom. And then he took it a step further and was like, well, what would have happened if my mother meditated when she was pregnant with me? And that curiosity sparked him to look into the science behind what meditation can do for pregnancy and how it can help not only the woman's emotional state, which we all know during pregnancy is a really big thing, but how it could help the development of the baby. And what he found just blew him away. You know, the science, like, I'll just say a few for you, but A woman who meditates when she's pregnant is 50% more likely to carry to term. And to carry to term, we know, has so many benefits because it allows the baby to fully develop in the womb. And 50%, that's huge. Yeah, that's amazing. Right? It helps with pain, which obviously women love to hear when they're about to give birth, by 40%. It helps to decrease pain by 40%. And then also with the development in the womb, it can allow babies to have better learning later on in life, helps with their IQ, and it just kind of helps to let them prepare for a world that's very welcoming, you know, and increases their connection. So those are just a few, but obviously, so it started in pregnancy, right? And he created these seven meditations. And it just so happens that at the same time that he was starting to get curious about this and create some meditations just to see what would happen, I was seven and a half months pregnant with my daughter, Annabelle, who's now uh, two and a half years old. And I was a full-time yoga instructor living in New York City. I helped manage a studio that I worked at. It was my life. And as I told you before, it's just something I really loved. It was my community. And at seven and a half months pregnant, I lost my job. I walked in one day. The studio decided that they no longer wanted to be open to have guides. and I walked out of there without a job. And I'm someone that has struggled throughout my whole life with depression, with ups and downs. And at that point, I knew just from my history that I was going to go into a depression because not only was I immediately worried about my financial situation, I was worried about becoming a mom. And I had just lost the community, one in which I loved these people, which were my family. So all of that was kind of boiling to the surface when I got an email from a friend who was helping the founder of Expectful to create the meditations, who's the guy that sent me the email is a really good friend of mine. He's a hypnotherapist. His name is Dan. And he had heard that I lost my job. And he was just like, hey, I'm helping to create these meditations for pregnant women. You know, they just launched seven of them. They're in a beta I think it would be really good for you to try this out. You know, would you be interested? And I was like, "Eh, all right. You know, (laughs) I didn't really want to meditate, to be honest. (laughs) I was like not interested in it at all. But like I said, I knew that I was going to go down emotionally. Like it was inevitable, you know, with my history. And I was worried because I was worried about how it was going to affect my baby. You know, just like when you worry about eating right during pregnancy and making sure that you're not eating anything that could harm your baby or, or how you move when you exercise when you're pregnant. I just like intuitively knew that my emotional state could have an effect on my baby. And I had no idea of any of the science, hmm. but I was worried about it. So 
I was like, all right, I'll do this meditation thing. Total like low expectations. They only had seven meditations. They were in beta, but I'm someone that makes goals for myself. So I was like, all right, I'll meditate for 30 days. Like I'll use these meditations and I'll just commit to once a day doing this and just see what happens. And I was just blown away. Like the meditations changed everything, everything. What do you mean? Can you go yeah. into it? Like how does for it sure. work? What happened? Keep going. Yeah. So the meditations were guided, which I think really helped me. And I do like to say that being a yoga instructor, I think that I was able to go into meditation with a very open mind, just because I'm very aware of my body. I really didn't put any pressure on myself to be good at meditation, which I think helped a lot. And it's a suggestion that I give to a lot of people when I talk to them today. I just sat the way that it felt comfortable for me. And I would put on the app, and the voice would come on, which was very soothing. And I would go through this guided meditation, which it could be talking about, you know, just connecting with my baby in that moment, which was like the best gift anyone could ever give you. Because after seven and a half months of pregnancy, you know, I obviously connected with my daughter when she would kick in my belly or, you know, at certain moments when I would just touch my belly, but I never really connected with her until I started meditating. So it kind of turned into this time where I just sat there and was fully present with her while she was still in my belly. By doing this just for, I mean, three to five days, you know, I can't like fully remember the exact day where I was like, holy crap, you know, this is working. But it was somewhere in that range that I just kind of as an outsider looking into my life, saw myself shift. I went from being someone who was lying in bed, which that's what I do when I start to go into depression. I just turn off all the lights, even if it's, you know, sunny outside, I go into my bed and I stay. And I don't want to leave. Nothing can get me out. And I went from that to wanting to go outside, to wanting to go for long walks, to cooking for my husband, you know, like him coming home and seeing me like in the kitchen, just like going for it. A woman that had just lost her job, you Mm -hmm. know, and is pregnant and is so happy and so grateful all of a sudden. And I think that that was a really big wake up call for me that even though I went through this hard experience, I could find the gratitude in what was happening to me. Like, although I had lost my job, now I had three months to just be with my baby, Mm. you know, and sure, like there was worries in my head, but they didn't have to run the show. Mm. And I think that meditation really showed that to me and continues to show it to me that I don't have to get stuck in my mind. I can actually just lean into what's happening right now. And in short, how I like to describe it is that meditation turned my third trimester into the best trimester of my entire pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And that's after losing something that I loved. You are bringing up so many things for me that are so important that I'm so glad you are talking about. I want to first start with depression because I think that It's something that can happen to a lot of people. And postpartum depression is now starting to be talked about. But antenatal while you're pregnant depression is not something that's as well known. And for me personally, got thrown into a walloping kind of shock and depression for the first trimester of being pregnant with my little one because there's so much going on. The loss of your past self, the physical changes of your body not feeling like you're ready for it, not having people who know about what's going on with you. There's just so many things that can come up. And I remember I worked with a therapist at that time and she said, just tell your baby, just tell your baby what's happening. Mama feels really anxious. Like mama's really scared. Just saying that out loud makes me want to cry. But it's like you are having all these feelings while you're pregnant and being able to take time through meditation or something else and say, hey, this is the truth. This is the experience. And then maybe having that, identifying the emotions that you're feeling help take some of the anxiety off. Oh, whew, you're, getting me all, you're getting me all teary. And that was a divergence. But I just thought it was so important to tell people who are listening, like these are normal feelings. You're allowed to have them and talk to your baby and meditate. And if that sounds super weird, I'm going to ask Anna how to do it. So Anna, first of all, let's go back a little bit. What does it mean that you have dealt with depression? How has that shown up in your life? And how do you manage it? Yeah, you know, throughout my life, it's just, it's come in really big waves. And 
some have had definite things that have happened. For example, in my early 20s, I lost my period. There was no reason why. You know, a couple months went by, I didn't have my period. And I was like, oh, you know, what's going on? I went to a few doctors and those doctors all had different opinions, none of which made any sense to me. They started putting me on like the South Beach diet. Like one doctor was like, you need to stop eating carbs. And the next doctor was like, you need to stop drinking this foreign tea. And they obviously didn't know what was going on. And I didn't know what was going on. And that threw me into a three-year depression. I didn't ever get my period back for that long of a time. That's like the one that really is in my head. That's what's coming to the surface for me right now to speak about. Because that was just a really big moment in my life where everything seemed to be going right, like externally, but I was battling so much with my thoughts inside, you know, because obviously wearing like, am I never going to be able to have a baby? And it was affecting me physically. Like it was just different kind of symptoms. My hormones were obviously all out of whack. I know so much more now (laughs) about like hormones and stuff that it makes no sense. Like looking back, I probably could have cured it knowing what I know now. But yeah, that was a big moment in my life where I fell into depression. And then I stayed good for a while. And then certain jobs have tipped me into depression here and there. My husband likes to point out that if I'm not happy in my job, that I tend to not be happy in life. Mm -hmm. And it can really throw me off if I don't feel passionate about what I'm doing, which is why obviously Expectful is really good for me. And yoga is really good for me. You know, I almost went into it when I lost my job when I was pregnant. I went into postpartum depression, which you brought up. I can actually talk about how meditation helped me through that, if you'd like. Yeah, I'd love that. And for people who have never meditated before that might be listening, or they're like, what do these apps do? Can you walk us through how it helped you and how it works? Like, what are the logistics? What does it look like? Are you sitting on the floor? Does somebody talk to you? You know, go into there. Yeah, yeah, sure. So how you sit is really up to you. We recommend that if you are pregnant, and obviously in the second or third trimester, that you don't lay flat on your back. But if you're preparing to conceive, if you're in your first trimester, your doctor says it's okay, you can you can lay down, you know, so there really is no right or wrong. It's sitting the way that you feel comfortable. And that's for most of the meditations. We do have walking meditations in each library. So preparing to conceive, pregnancy and motherhood, there's a walking meditation in each because some people just naturally feel better when they're moving their body and they're doing a mindfulness practice. But for now, let's hang out in the seated one or lying down one. So you sit how you feel comfortable. You put on the app and you'll see a lot of different meditations and all of them were curated to identify with what could be happening with you right now in this time in your life. So for example, preparing to conceive, there's a meditation called overcoming uncertainty, right? So there's so much uncertainty when you're waiting to see if you're pregnant. So that meditation is going to allow you to ease your mind and just come back to the present moment. And then there's other meditations like progressive body relaxation, which is literally just to kind of relax your body from your head to your toes in a very slow process so that you feel completely relaxed physically. There's a slew. I mean, if you go in there, like you'll just see a bunch. In the third trimester, there's a meeting your baby visualization which still to this day is my favorite because I remember doing it and crying, like tears just falling from my eyes, visualizing, just having this voice talk me through the moment that I'm going to meet my daughter. Hmm. So it's all just a guided process. You turn on the app, you sit down, you close your eyes, and the voice takes you through a journey for 10 or 20 minutes. And all of our meditations are options of the time. So you could do 10 if you want, and you could do 20. It all depends on what you need. And that's really important because obviously a lot of us are very busy. And sometimes we have more time for this practice and sometimes we have less. So you just sit down and you you allow the person to take you through that process. And the main focus on anything is just that when you have the words, when you have someone guiding you through it, their words keep taking you back to the present moment. And that's really what meditation is, no matter what kind of meditation you're doing. Expectful is guided, but there's other ones that are like mantra, right? And that just means focusing on a single word over and over again. And what that does is just trains the mind to be more in the present moment. 
Mm-hmm. So every time that you're coming back to what you're listening to or the mantra that you're saying in your head, you're training your mind to be more and more present. And it's just like you're training a muscle, like you build a muscle and you watch it grow. When you build this present moment awareness through listening, you start to become more present even when you're not meditating. And that presence obviously carries into your life and allows you to be more present as a pregnant woman, allows you to be more present as a parent, as a woman who is preparing to conceive. And it eases a lot of the worries that run our lives usually. You know, Mm. so much of the thoughts in our head we think are ourselves, right? Like we think the thoughts in our heads are what is happening and we're not our thoughts. This is so important. And there's so many different layers to it that I love because you can extrapolate it out to even parenting and child raising. A lot of my job as a parent, I have a kid that's almost the same age as yours. I feel like with one and two year olds, a lot of your job is like telling them what's happening and telling them about the world. And when he gets really upset, I'm like, you're really upset, right? And I'm explaining what's happening. And then I I see that back in the process of my own mind. I'm like, oh, you know, it's really helpful when somebody tells you what you're feeling or just helps you pause and acknowledge. Mm -hmm. And that to me in my own practice is a lot of what meditation is, taking the time to observe Mm, and look in. So when did you first start meditating? Was it when you were pregnant at the seven and a half months or yeah. had you had a practice before? Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't have a practice before. And I think it surprises a lot of people because I was a yoga instructor. I know that there was maybe like maybe two times that I had attempted meditation before that. And it just never made sense to me like to sit and not do anything just seemed very unproductive to me. And I always thought I had this funny idea in my head that you had to like sit in lotus pose and your hips had to be really open, (laughs) you know, and your arms had to be in some kind of mudra. And I was very concerned that you had to like sit still, you couldn't move. And with Expectful, it changed all of that. And it's something that we talk about on the platform a lot is that it's a place where you come and you know you're getting it right because you can't get it wrong. So no matter how you do the practice, you're already doing it right. And that allowing is what can really transform people's lives because they're not constantly trying to control what's happening. Instead, they're allowing what's happening to be. You understand? Yeah, it's so soothing. And it's for me, I feel like my shoulders are really tense and they're high up close to my ears and I'm like all stressed out and I don't notice it until I hear somebody that says just to be where you are and you're kind of you sigh you're just like Mm. oh well gosh (laughs) and then I fall asleep a lot of times I listen to meditations at night and I just go right to bed (laughs) but it's because it's what my body needed right like ah so tell us about the process of you joining expectful what did that look like yeah so you know I, I did their beta so I did the seven meditations for a while for the three months of the last trimester and During that time, I had a call with the founder because he was getting feedback from all the women that were in the beta and he just wanted to know how it was going. So I talked to him, you know, gave him my feedback, thought, you know, wiped my hands clean, was like, thanks for, you know, like this awesome product, like truly helped me through pregnancy and went on with my life, you know, gave birth. And two weeks after I gave birth, the founder reached out to me on Facebook message. We had become friends on Facebook. And he was like, Hey, Anna, I'm looking to find someone to be a community guide for Expectful. And I just wanted to reach out to you before I put it on any platforms because I think that you'd be really good at it. I was two weeks postpartum, and I didn't even know my name. Postpartum was like, what just happened? But I knew that I was curious about working for Expectful just because of how much it transformed my life. So I agreed to get on the phone call with him. His name is Mark. And he told me the story that I told you in the beginning of this about his mother and why he created it, which I had no idea. And the story moved me so much, like his mission to give babies a better start in life by just giving their mothers a better tool for their mind. It just made so much sense to me. And I just immediately wanted to be a part of it. I remember taking an interview over the phone with him at my home in my bedroom and walking out of the bedroom and looking at my husband. And I was so tired. My husband was so tired. And I set up an in-person interview with Mark a week later. And I just looked at my husband. and was like, listen, 
I don't know like who I am right now, but I really want this job. Will you help me prepare, you know, for this second interview? And he did. So I was really lucky. And the rest is history. I mean, a month afterwards, I started working for Expectful. So a month after giving birth, I started working full time from home, taking care of my daughter and starting a new job. And that was a whole thing in itself. But yeah, ever since now I'm the co-founder of Expectful because really Mark and I just joined forces and created something bigger than I think we even imagined. (laughs) Wow. So what did work look like in those early days when you started and you were at one month postpartum? Were you working from home? Were you working full time? Like, and now I just want to know everything. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'll take you through it. So (laughs) like, how much do I want to No, I'll tell you. So let me just take you back to when I did give birth, five days after I gave birth, I hadn't meditated in those five days and my daughter had latch issues. So I was trying to breastfeed her and there was a whole slew of things that happened for that not to be working. And on the fifth day that night, we had stayed up all night for six hours straight. My daughter just screamed and I tried to latch her for six hours straight. Oh. And I stayed patient because I was just, you know, in a daze trying my best just to feed her and it just wasn't working. And so five days after giving birth, I had only slept a total of like four hours. And Yikes. yeah, like just hearing your baby scream for that long, it does penetrate you, you know, like it just does. So I remember that on that fifth day, my mom was here and my husband and they were like, listen, Anna, why don't you just like go try and take a nap? Like she's sleeping, just go try and take a nap. So I was like, okay. So I walked into my room and I lay down to take a nap. And of course I couldn't fall asleep because that's just what happens. And my mind was racing and I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just meditate. And I hadn't meditated those five days because really I just completely forgot about it. Like (laughs) who thinks about that when all that's happening? And I sat up and I saw my thoughts for the first time since giving birth. And they were like, you're horrible at this. Your baby can't even breastfeed. Your baby would be better off without you. And being someone that struggles with depression, being someone that has had suicidal thoughts in the past, and then being a mother and seeing that that's where my thoughts were going. That's the story that they were telling me. Like truly, I look at that as a moment that where meditation saved my life. Because if I didn't have the understanding that I wasn't my thoughts and to look at my thoughts in that moment, I could have wrote a very different story, my postpartum. Yeah. So meditation became non-negotiable in that moment every single day, no matter if it's a minute or if it's 10 or if it's 20, usually it was not, you know, for longer than maybe three minutes, but it just was something where I needed to check in with my thoughts. So I took you back there to take you into what I was going through in that moment. And that continued. I went through postpartum depression and it stayed with me for nine months. So I meditated through the whole thing. And meditation, I think it's very important to say, at least for me, I can only speak from my experience. It did not cure my postpartum depression. But what it did was keep me on the edge. It reminded me every single day, you are not that. Like that thought, you are not that. And although I could see the thoughts, I could see myself like in this bubble, I knew I wasn't the bubble. So when I did start with Expectful, I was going through all of that. And of course, you know, as a new mom, I didn't disclose with the founder of Expectful, hey, I want to work for this. But just so you know, I'm going through all of this emotional and mental stuff because we have a stigma in our society to not speak about this stuff or that it's in a way it makes you unstable, right? So I kept it to myself. And the day that I started working for Expectful from home while taking care of my daughter, like I said, was the first day that I was home alone with her as well. So my husband went to work and I was just home alone doing this thing that like, I still didn't understand how to be a mother. For the first month, it was really a struggle because I was learning how to be in a new job and also learning how to mother a child at the same time. So everything was very new. And it was winter, it was December, and I'm not a good winter person. So I was falling even deeper into being home all the time. 
that first month was really hard. And I don't think I've ever told the founder of Expectful this, but my husband came home a month after I started with them. I remember we were changing our daughter and I said to him, I don't think I can do this. I think I need to quit. And he looked at me and he said, Anna, I ran the numbers. You have to keep the job. And I remember in that moment, I don't think I've ever felt so wrecked. Like I just felt like someone pulled the carpet out from underneath me and I had to continue to do this thing that just felt impossible. Fortunately for me, my job at Expectful then was every day talking to pregnant women or new moms about meditation on the phone. Like it was really old school. We were cold calling and talking to them after they were using our beta. And meditation in those conversations, like being able to talk to these women, they helped me through postpartum. And they showed me that I wasn't alone because they would open up to me about their stories and every conversation was about the emotional side of pregnancy. Every conversation was about the emotional side of postpartum and how we can heal together. So that was my life. It was very, very difficult. I mean, taking care of a child, especially that like one month, I definitely think if I ever have another kid, like I will have a longer, hopefully time to recover and just have time to not have to do other things other than mother. That lasted. And then around yeah, six, nine months, my head came above water. <laughs> so but now it's a different story. You know, eventually I put my daughter in daycare at 10 months, I think it was for just a few hours, you know, like one or two hours a week, which I felt terrible about. But now she's in there five days a week, half days, I can get so much work done in four hours. I mean, I don't know what I was doing before I came a mom when it came to work, the amount of time that we can get stuff done is just insane. <laughs> Just to clarify, were you doing all of your work for Expectful and taking care of your kid at home at the same time? Same time. Yeah. Like no help. No help. My husband would leave at 730 in the morning and come back at six o'clock at night. And most times he would come home and, you know, I probably wouldn't have got everything done. So I would just hand him the baby and go into the room and continue to work. So it was, you know. <laughs> totally. I am so grateful for you for sharing and being honest and candid because I think that's so what matters, right? It's so much more important than to pretend we're somehow these superheroes. Like, motherhood is really effing hard and it's a full-time job in its own right. And it's incredibly challenging and nobody is born with this magical toolkit where we just get to press download and be like, oh, now I got the update. Like now I know how to do it. Like we have to go back and go through it all painfully and figure it out step by one step. And it's just, oh, I am feeling for you. And I'm also identifying with you because those early days are not easy. And there are so many women who are working doing that and working full-time jobs. And it's just, it's a lot. Of course, our emotions are all over the place because we're doing incredible amounts of work. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, looking back, I really wish I would have gotten help. Like I wish I would have not tried to do it all. You know, I think that I had a real mentality that was like, I need to show that I can do this. And I wish I didn't. I wish I allowed myself to let other people help me because so badly now I want to help others. Yeah. You know, I want to like I see a new mom have a new baby and it takes everything in my body to hold me back from being like, do you want me to come over like for five hours tomorrow? And just you could shower, you could do whatever you want to do, you know, but you food. <laughs> yeah, like I'll do everything. And it's still just this weird thing in our society where I hold myself back from saying that because when I have in the past, I see women kind of being like, no, I got this. You know what I mean? Like, I got this. And I hope that we can really get to a place where we could be like, we got this. You why, know? Yeah. Why do you think that's so? Like, I see it too. And I have my own ideas. But like, why do you think that women feel the need to have to prove to other people or to themselves that they can, quote, do it all? Like, where do you think that's coming from? I think because they think that that's what everyone else is doing. I truly believe that somewhere in our minds, we believe that what we see on social media or what we see up front when a woman is walking a baby on a street is her reality. And it's not. We don't see behind closed doors. You know, like there are walls behind our lives. And because of that, 
we don't see what's really going on and we don't see how similar we are. And that keeps us from wanting to be the one that says, okay, like I'll actually take some help. And, you know, it's funny because just last week I dropped my daughter off at daycare. (laughs) It's going to sound so insignificant, but I know that you'll understand. On Monday, I put her in daycare for a whole day. Like it was, you know, nine o'clock in the morning to 6 p.m. at night. And I'd never done that. And when I dropped her off in the morning and I walked out, I got in my car and I cried and I felt horrible mom just for putting her in an extra like couple hours because I wasn't going to see her. And I truly think that it's because of meditation that this happened. I sat in my car, I started to cry. And then I realized I'm not the only one that's ever done this or is doing this. There is another mom somewhere that is doing this at this exact moment that is doubting herself, that's feeling like a bad mom, that's sad that she can't do it all. And I arguably in my head said, every mom has felt this. And I am not alone. So that was this week? (laughs) Yeah, it was this week. (laughs) So on Monday, I switched my kid to a new daycare and took him to a new daycare. Like I literally had a freak out moment in our Facebook group, the Startup Pregnant Facebook group, where I was just like, I can't get anything done. I just want to know if he's sleeping. I want to know if I made the right decision as a mom and was a wreck for most of the day. By the way, right here, (laughs) someone wreck right across the microphone from you was having a freak out on Monday. It makes me feel good. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but it just makes me feel human. Like it makes me understand that so much of this, like how we could just laugh about that. Like if that could happen so much more often, like that would just be beautiful. That would be beautiful. Like stress levels would be down, (laughs) you know, support would be up. Like, uh, I think it's such a myth that women do it all. Like we take the little pieces of every person. We're like, okay, so they're really good at meditation and they're really good at this other thing. And they're really good. And we kind of conglomerate it all into one thing and then feel bad that we're not all of those things. When the truth is that no one else is all of those things, it's just this like mythological ideal that no one is doing. Yeah. Which brings me to one of my favorite questions to ask moms, what don't you do? You mean, what don't I do that's like good for me? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> just what don't you do by choice? And I'll give you some examples. I know one person told me she doesn't shower every day because she doesn't care. And another person doesn't fold laundry. And I always want to ask more moms this question because I think a lot of us actually don't do it all. And I want to make sure to make that obvious. So in work, in business, in (laughs) mothering, in your personal life, in self-care, whatever it is, what don't you do? There is so much I don't do. Um, (laughs) Like when you just said those examples, it's like, oh my God, it's like all of them. So my husband does the laundry. I don't. He folds the laundry. I do grocery shopping. My husband definitely washes the dishes more than I do. We don't have a dishwasher. So that's like a bigger thing. I don't clean. And I hope that my husband can like hear me on this interview right now because he's probably like so happy that I'm saying it. (laughs) I'm like, he's the clean one and I'm just not. So I'm definitely the mom that's like, allowing my daughter to roll around on the floor and not worried about it where he's like freaking out about it. Like my daughter licked a subway pole the other day. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, well, I guess our immunity is going to be good. And he's like, oh my God, you know? So yeah, I think I'm lazy. It's definitely not the word, but like, I'm just very whatever about certain things. And I don't always get my work done. You know, yesterday I sat in a restorative yoga pose for 10 minutes and then I went for an hour run while my daughter was in daycare. And I was just like, this is what's happening because I can't produce anything. I do a lot of writing for Expectful and I was blocked and I needed to do something else. So yeah, sometimes I just really give myself permission just to not do the things I'm supposed to be doing in the moment and be totally okay with that. That makes sense. A hundred percent. Thank you for saying that and for sharing. Yeah. What do you wish more people knew about pregnancy and fertility? Like, what do you think are some of the common cultural misconceptions about pregnancy? I mean, of course, I'm going to go to the mind. I think that there's a big misconception that pregnancy is this beautiful time. And I say that with that. I have talked to hundreds of pregnant women and there have been some that are like, I felt amazing during pregnancy. My birth was euphoric. I mean, my eyes are so wide when I'm talking to them. Like, I just can't believe they exist. My story was not that. But I think that a lot of people don't understand 
all the emotional stuff, all the uncertainty that can come with it. And especially when it comes to things like the first trimester, when perhaps you have nausea and you're completely exhausted and somehow you're supposed to show up at work and act like everything's fine. And that carries into, you know, trying to decide what you're going to do when you give birth or postpartum and making these big decisions while you're pregnant and you don't even know really what to expect if you've never been a mom before when it comes to the aftermath. A lot of people don't understand what's happening behind the body. You know, they see this growing belly and they think that that's what's changing. But there's so much that's changing inside that just can't be seen. I mean, that's why on Expectful, it's our goal to make meditation as common as prenatal vitamins in the next five years so that women can have that support through their pregnancy, through their fertility. I mean, the earlier you start, the more you have, like the tool is bigger and better, you know? So that's why we even created the meditations for preparing to conceive, just like give them a tool sooner. And obviously there's so much emotional stuff with that process as well. There's so much. I'm so glad you're saying this because And now having gone through it, I can absolutely understand it. But I don't remember people telling me that or advising me about it and saying, hey, it's not just your body that changes. There's all of this emotional, spiritual, physical identity stuff that changes. Even just like having your body grow what feels like uncontrollably. I was and am an athlete and having my body completely change that fast was super weird and also depressing. I didn't like it. And so many people are like, oh, you look so beautiful. And I was like, not how I feel. Like, definitely (laughs) not what like, my vagina is leaking. I smell weird. (laughs) My joints hurt. I can't bend over and touch my toes. Like, none of this is pleasant. Why do you keep telling me it's the best time of my life? Disagree. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I said goodbye to my body when I became pregnant. I remember because I'm an athlete as well. And like the day I got pregnant, I remember looking in the mirror and going, okay, Anna, well, this is goodbye. <laughs> you oh. know, like, it sounds so ridiculous right now. But I was like, you know, your body's just never going to be the same, but you're going to have a baby. And like, that's going to be enough. And with that said, like, I love my body now, you know, and I look back on that. I'm like, what were you doing? (laughs) You know, like, what were you thinking? But I agree, like through pregnancy, there was parts of me where I was like, wow, this feels amazing to like have this belly. And there was other parts of me where I was super scared of the aftermath. Like, how's this going to look after? And you never really think it's going to get that big, right? Like it just keeps growing. You're like, can it really get bigger? (laughs) Like, seriously, you know? There's so much. I mean, body image, the identity is huge, huge. Yeah. And it's just, I really think it's starting to get talked about now, meaning like these last few years, I feel like the identity talk is surfacing more. But yeah, when I was pregnant, I didn't really feel like people were talking about it at all. How do you think you've changed in your work habits and work style? And more specifically, there have been women who have said that pregnancy and parenting while tremendously difficult and challenging, have made them stronger or better or more efficient. Do you identify with that at all? Has your work style changed? 100%. I am so efficient. I think it comes down to that you don't have a choice. When you become a parent, and if you are someone that that is working and you have a set amount of hours in which to get that done, you have hyper focus because you know that this matters. Like you know that you can only get this done in this amount of hours, the time that you have. And that also you need to get it done because the money that it produces, produces money to support your family. I have become way more efficient, way more focused. Of course, I started my meditation practice during this time. So who knows what helped? You know, it probably, they both helped with the focus part. I can really accomplish a lot in a very short amount of time. and. I feel so much like a superwoman when it comes to that aspect of parenthood. I feel like becoming a parent really does make you into a superwoman. I guess I question sometimes whether or not that's a good thing to always pump the gas on. You know, Mm -hmm. like I think it's good to pump the gas when you're working as a superwoman, but perhaps you need to ease up sometimes to create space for other things because it's not all go, 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 because then you're going to miss all the good parts, you know? Oh, again, hope that answers your yeah, question. <laughs> 100%. I love that you said that because I think a real challenge for parents and people who are pregnant and all of the in-between people who are caring for other people more generally is it's not always hustle. You have to 
figure out how do you restore and replenish yourself and where does your own nourishment come from? Because it's not just pushing through the next thing. Sometimes it's about creating a life that sustains you. And those aren't easy things to do. And I don't think we have a culture that practices that very well. And also, I mean, being okay with not setting expectations. Like I shared with you today, my daughter is sick and like I couldn't, you know, go to my private client and I like couldn't get my work done this morning because she's sick. And it's learning to be okay with what pops up. And parenthood teaches you that, right? Because every single second isn't really up to you. Like it's really up to how your child is, at least if you have a young child. So I think that it's really allowed me to just be okay when when I wake up and the day goes the complete opposite direction than I imagined. Mm. It's more like we're more able to see life as it really is, as opposed Mm -hmm. to having this illusion of control. Because I remember my past self that was very tightly wound and able to say, well, this is when the meetings will happen and you show up and you make it work and you do this stuff. And I now think of that as just having this illusion of control about being able to plan every moment of your life. Deep down, that's not ever really true. It's just this like wishful thinking practice. Yeah, that results in a lot of stress for us. You know, I am fascinated by words and their meanings. And I think it was about a year ago, I was writing some stuff for preparing to conceive. And control is such a big thing when women are trying to get pregnant. And I looked up, well, what is the root meaning of control? And one of the definitions was control means to keep from flourishing. No. Yeah. And it has been such a teacher that definition to me, because it truly is when you try to control, you hold back what naturally wants to blossom, you know? I mean, you can apply that to so many things, right? Like birth, like you could apply it to parenthood, just trying your best to let go of the control so that things can flourish, so that life can just happen instead of resisting. Because the resistance doesn't need to be there. We create the resistance. It's not naturally there. It's something that we put there. Mm -hmm. And it just puts stress on ourselves. That's all it does. It doesn't help. It doesn't change the outcome. We have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. And to resist, it doesn't change that. It It just just gives us stress. That adds friction. (laughs) Exactly. Yes. Oh, this has been (laughs) such a wonderful and nourishing conversation with you. Where can people find out more about you and Expectful and follow you on the internet to tell you how wonderful you are? So yeah, expectful.com. That's the website. I write a lot for the Expectful blog. And you can find me on Instagram at Anna Gannon Yoga or on Facebook at Anna Gannon Yoga. But mainly if you go to Expectful, you'll be seeing a lot of me. (laughs) Perfect. I always like to tell people to go say nice things because new moms and parents and people who are hard at work at startups, we could always use a kind message. So Oh, yeah. (laughs) go say hi. Okay. (laughs) Thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. It was really great being on and just excited to be able to sit down and hang out with you, Sarah. This podcast is made possible by sponsors like you. Consider supporting this podcast with a monthly donation on our Patreon page. Head to patreon.com slash startup pregnant. We've got folks who we call our coffee friends who donate the equivalent of a cup of coffee each month to make this show possible. And we're backed by companies we believe in that can help make the lives of busy entrepreneurs and parents a little bit easier. If you want to become one of our company sponsors, head to startuppregnant.com slash podcast and get in touch. And you know, I always say this and I mean it. Leave us a review on iTunes if you like our show. It takes a few seconds and it really does help us a lot. If you want more of what we're talking about, go over to startuppregnant.com and get on our email list. We send out a weekly newsletter with time-saving tips for parents and entrepreneurs. And I always include a weekly gadget or tool or something awesome that we've stumbled upon to help make your life just a little bit easier. And as always, you can reach out to us at hello at startuppregnant.com. We love hearing from you.